to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The power of a transformed mind. You want to make progress. You want to move forward. You have to sustain a superior belief system that is higher and greater than the context of culture, the context of your background. This is where many well-meaning believers, we refuse to transit mentally. We, we, we are loyal to belief systems that are destructive, satanic. Do you know your mindset is the gateway that both the Holy Spirit and demons flow through to access your life? Are we together? Transformation is very, very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. There are many believers who have refused to be transformed. And because of their refusal for transformation, they find out that they are unable to walk in the fullness of that which God desires. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, please. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, look up please, so is he, not so he will be. You are already it. Your thought life, your mindset, your perspectives. Write this down please. Let's talk a bit about mindsets. If this is where I stop tonight, it is too important to be brushed. Write this down. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It is a viewpoint. It is a perspective. Your mindset talks about your ideologies, your value systems, your thinking pattern. Let me define what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that the victim is kept perpetually in that line of thought. It is that spiritual condition that makes the word of God of none effect. That means what the devil does when he wants to destroy you is to bring informations that are based on lies, informations that are not consistent with the character of God. They may be sociologically right. There may be thoughts that you are familiar with. When he finds out that those thoughts are crystallized in your mind, demon spirits come to build a wall around that mindset to ensure that there is no other way you think because your thinking is what keeps the door open for their operation. If you're, The Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. That means what follows you is a report card of what you believe. You don't drive what follows you. You change what you believe and what follows you changes too. You see that now? These signs shall follow them that believe. So what is following me is following me because of what I believe. Failure, retrogression. You have a relationship in two weeks. All your friends just hate you and leave you. Everybody, you've given excuses that everybody hates you. The signs are following you. You don't say, go, I don't like you. That's not how you drive them. You change, they are, they are coming in honor. Something in your mind is attracting them. When you become disloyal to those faulty belief systems, the signs also change. Are we together? Mindsets are formed through cultural influences. Now, there are positive aspects of culture, but there are very wrong, demonic, and destructive aspects of culture. Family backgrounds, past experiences, 
failures and limitations, levels of exposure, associations, all these are factors that frame our mindsets. And when God wants to do business with you in this kingdom, you will have to contend for a transformed mind. There are many people who God cannot use them today because something is wrong with their thinking. Their thinking does not give that allowance. Mindset. How does the process of transformation occur? We're praying. Number one, the first process that leads to transformation is awareness, a recognition. Even if you don't know the answer, the fact that you know you are in a situation that needs help is already the process of transformation. Transformation starts with recognition and awareness. Even if it's an awareness of your ignorance, it is a miracle in itself. A child does not know he's a child. I hope you know that. It's an adult that knows that what the child is doing is called childishness. A fool does not know he is foolish. It's only a wise person that there has to be a reference. So when God wants to show you mercy, he will find a way of contrasting your mindset with a superior belief. Now you look from that lens and see that, ah, I'm doing something wrong. Otherwise, you will flatter yourself in your mid because in your world, you are still king, no matter how depraved that world is. You will know how faulty your kingdom is when another king comes. In ancient times, there were times when other kings would come. Both the king and his kingdom, they sweep them. That's how mindsets are. You can live in a small world and because you are king in that small world, you can still believe that it's a kingdom worthy of living in. Until God expands your mind by showing you the possibilities that can be, then you will come back and start deconstructing those mindsets. Mindsets are powerful, very powerful. Genesis 11, let me show you something as we pray. Please give us Genesis 11, we'll read the first four verses, maybe four or five. The Bible says, and the whole earth were of one language and of one speech, verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of China, and they dwelt there. Verse 3, the Bible says, And they said to one another, Goto, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they made bricks for stone and slime they made for mortar. Notice, notice that Nimrod was just proposing something. They had not started the building. He was doing something to their minds. Gentlemen, I'm putting you as a team, we are on a project. Whether it was a spiritual building or physical, we know that creation happened. There was a building and he started by walking on their minds. Verse 4, the Bible says, he said to them, let us build a city whose tower and whose top may reach the heavens and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. Verse 5, now this is a very fearful scripture. Read it with me. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Stop. That means while they were talking in the realm of the spirit, a building was rising. And God said, who is building? He didn't come. And, they had not started. But God said he came to see the building that was finished already. The moment their mind started building it in the realm of the spirit, there was a structure that was rising that called the attention of God. Everything is built twice. Anything that is not built twice cannot be truly built. You build your company twice. You build your destiny twice. And the first building is the authentic one. Because even if the other one is destroyed, that one will force a physical equivalence of it to come. Believe what I'm teaching you. It's true. So you can be right where you are. And the Holy Spirit takes your mind to a place where the great are seated and says this is your space in destiny. While that is happening in heaven they are already seeing you move whereas you think you are in one small room. Do you know the realm of the spirit can discern progress? Please hear what I'm telling you. This is how some of us came to this thing by the grace of God. Right from where you are your body may be limited by transport fare 
but your mind has an ability, your mind has omnipresence. It can enter your future and find out that that thing God said is true. It will return back. Only your mindset can hold your hand to where you need to be. I remember days when I would have the vision, seeing myself around the world preaching the gospel, standing and talking and ministering to kings and nobles. From that background is a joke based on my background. But I found out that this mind is a miracle. It's a miracle that will take ages for men to know what God gave them. Dream with God. Right from that room. Dream with God. And there is no power in existence. Men can bully your body, not your mindset. The power, the law. This, this is one of the most powerful spiritual laws I learned in my life. It is, the, uh, it is this law that keep, puts everybody at the same level in life. Everybody has the same opportunity. You may not believe what I'm telling you, but it's true. From the lens of a transformed mind, the justice system of God ensures that if you use your mind, there is no limitation that will be sustained in your life. Go back home. Write down the business idea. Write down the vision for 2021. Write a scripture, connect to it, and dream with the Spirit of God. Let Him show you while that is happening, your current mindset will say you are mad. Is right. That's why you are living it. <laughs> your current mindset will say, no, no, it has. You can wave it goodbye and say, I wave this level of life goodbye and it will wave you back forever. Hallelujah. The only limit in my life is the voice of God and process. These are the only limits I have in my life. The voice of God and process. These are the only limits. I have chosen that these are the only things that limit me in life. The voice of God and process. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Our time is up. Can you spare me five more minutes? Please listen. I want you to pay attention. I've shared with you the law of vision, the law of light, specific spiritual illumination. Your, your spiritual sojourn is profitless if you cannot connect the result that that light leads to. Just reading the Bible randomly in hope that you will ease the guilt of not being serious with God will not profit you. You have to look for specific light that leads to specific outcomes. Are we together? And then the power of a transformed mind. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to change my mind. It's a decision. How do you contend for transformation? Valuable information. You have to introduce to your mind informations that are now superior in context relative to what you already have there. You cannot listen to what you've been listening to before, before you became a Christian, before you came to this church and expect transitions to happen. You will have to sustain the discipline. That's the, the discipline of allowing the truth that can build your mind to be introduced. And you have to pay the price to be consistent. I dare you, go and get your pastor's tapes. Make up your mind that I must listen to two or three or four of these teachings every day. That's why I said it requires discipline. Discipline. You listen to one in the morning. You can play one while you are walking. The goal is not just awareness. The goal is transportation. You are transporting that information right to your subconscious. This is true.
one more law and then we're done tonight. The law of productivity. These are the laws that govern advancement. The law of productivity. Proverbs chapter 18, please, and verse 16. The law of productivity. It says the gift of a man. Proverbs 18 and verse 16. The gift of a man maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So your gift is like an usher. You know how you come into a place and they say, let me see your invitation. Oh, you're invited this way. Is your gift that is responsible for giving you space. To have an illusion that there is a space waiting for you is just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere waiting for you. You create that space. Are we together? Yes. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. I was, I was just celebrating and commending your pastor for the profound, his profound understanding in the area of faith, in the area of family life. I mean, he's uncanny, his perspectives. It's true. It's true. I think you should clap. How many lives, how many destinies, how many homes, how many people he has given answers and explanation and perspectives. The gift of a man. Nobody is going to keep clapping for you indefinitely for nothing. People love you, but they love themselves. They love their future. So to have this belief that people will indefinitely keep clapping. No. You must have something of substance that gives you space in destiny. I made up my mind as a covenant with my own life and destiny. That everywhere God has granted me a gift and an ability... I will sharpen it in a way that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Not for self-aggrandizement, but that you are, you, 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 these are principles that lift you to a position where you can represent the purposes of God. Please challenge the spirit of laziness in your life. Some of you, without developing your gift, people have started commenting on it. Imagine what happens when you develop it. I hope you still like me. Please, listen, listen to me. Nobody goes to a mango tree without mango and just starts clapping and is happy. You look at the tree, you may stay a few minutes to get shade and move. But once it is time for mango, as it starts coming out, it starts, the, the fruit is calling you. The mango does not want followers. The mango is not looking for followers, but it is too gifted to be ignored. The mango does not go around calling for followers. It just keeps building the mango. And because hunger is something you cannot resist, you may ignore it for a while, but one day, when the sun scourges you and you stand and watch this mango, Don't call men. They only produce fruits. And men have to swallow their pride. Have you seen the skills that people employ to climb trees? All because they are looking for... I once saw a video of... Um, I think they were trying to... This, this palm, palm... I think the one they climb with as though they are climbing a ladder. I said, you mean all this skill to reach that tree? Be gifted and watch how people will inconvenience themselves with joy to come and place a demand on the grace of God upon your life. When people give excuses of time, excuses of comfort, it's because your gift is not notable enough. I assure you, ask the herbalist. A politician, respectfully speaking, will come with his whole dignity and meet a man in a tattered room and not ask whether there is AC and not ask whether the man can speak English. The man says, turn behind and move backward. And he says, yes, sir. Because he knows that my, my political career is at the mercy of that. May you be so gifted in the name of Jesus. May your gift be so refined that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Believe what I share with you. There are people in this country who cannot go out of a job for one month. Believe me. Believe me. In 
as much as we are saying there is no job, there are companies that if some of their people cough, they will buy a pharmacy, not a drug. Make up your mind that you will be so gifted if it's a ministry discern the dimensions of God's grace that he has put and work it out, place your life upon it. Apostle, God has called me to be a prophet. Like who? Everything you prophesy is wrong. The world will not place a demand on that kind of grace. Let's let in the name of honesty. Are we together? Apostle, God has called me to be a kingdom financier. Let me know what you know about finances. Can you talk to kings? You are talking to your colleagues and you are happy about it. Your colleagues are not billionaires. Thank God for them. But your goal is to be able to mentor kings that a nation will call you to hear the counsel of God upon your life. Make up your mind that you will not be small. Go back and refine your gifts. Apostle, do you know I can cook? Can the governor eat your food? Because you see, you have to serve kings to receive the rewards of kings. Am I challenging you? Let me tell you this. There is nothing that, it, that is of value that is not in sufficient demand in this life to bless you. If you are in every industry, there are people at the top. It's those who are at the top that enjoy the blessings. Make up, shake away mediocrity. When people are clapping for you, look at those clapping for you. If they are not kings, keep moving. Mark 1, 37. And when they had found him, this was the story of Jesus. Jesus had finished healing, doing several things. He ran away to go and just rest and pray. And men would not let him rest. There was such a magnetic property. Let me tell you, being gifted carries a strange a strange magnetic property. It's amazing the level of inconvenience people will go through with joy when you are gifted. I assure you in today's world, most likely it's only your family that will love you whether you are valuable or not. God and your family members. They are enough to support you but not enough to reward you. The vast majority of your reward will be in the hands of people who are in desperate need. They need people who are gifted. I made a vow with God that you will never meet me twice to be blessed. No. Can you rise to that level of grace? Can you rise to that level of value? You are a CEO, your company. What solutions are you providing? Can I meet you once and be addicted to you? Because of the power of the value that you carry. You know, people give me all kinds of gifts and people paint me and sometimes when I see the photo they give, I say, you mean this is me? You didn't see it? You know, of course, I love what they did, but ah! I say, oh no, no, come on, please. Are we together? And yet there are a few that I look at and I'm like, you drew this? You say, yes, sir. What do you do? You say, once in a while I just do it and I'm saying, my goodness, once in a while? I would, I, I, I would pay a thousand times for this. Nigerians wake up. Believers wake up. There is something you have that the world is looking for. And can I tell you, they will not come to you while you are growing. They will come to the refined version of you. your pastor hides today and says he's not going to preach for five months he's going to have to beg God in that retreat and say God release me to bless people because they will not let him rest 
Someone's home at least will be on fire enough for them to call him and say, sir, please wake up. I don't care whether you are having a retreat in the name of Jesus. If it takes flying you to this place, oh, you need to see how men react to real value. Your desire of decades can come to you in a moment when you make up your mind to be truly valuable. These are the laws of advancement. You enter your Sabbath to the degree to which you are valuable. You rise to a point where competition is no longer a possibility. You never have planes clashing with themselves in the air. There is enough space there. Traffic is usually down. Listen to me. Do you know that as I'm standing here right now, I'm rounding up. As I'm standing here right now, no matter how I stretch, I can't see the island. No matter how I stretch, I can't see Abel Kuta Ogun State because I'm on the ground. But a star can be shining here and I can call someone in another state. He can still see the same star because it is high to the sky. If you become that star from where you are, you don't have to be moving. Anywhere people look at you, was it not a star that was shining? The, the same star called the Magi, right to that place where Jesus was. Spiritually, I know that some of us here are in ministry and you came to just honor pastor and honor the conference. God is challenging us. There is a dimension of grace, spiritual illumination, value that can be brought when you bring something, the table of greatness is still empty. But you don't sit down for nothing. You first present your gift, then you sit down. And life must vet that gift. There is a threshold level of competence and accuracy that grants you access to sit down. Make up your mind that you will take away shame and reproach from your life and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have to pray. Rise up on your feet, please. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so. and we're done. point and then I speak over your life and work night. One prayer point. Lord, I make up my mind to partner with the word and the spirit for an exceptional life. It's time for me to move forward. Open your mouth and pray. Please be tired of where you are. I came to shake your current level. There is more in you. You call it gaining momentum. Someone is praying. Someone is rising from this conference in the name of Jesus, rising by the Spirit of God in ministry, in business, in career.
is doing something tonight. from moving forward. I break free right now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Thank God for what has been done in my life so far. In ministry, in business. But I declare in the name of Jesus it's time to take a flight with destiny. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. In the name of Jesus, you are shifting to a higher level. God is planting a dissatisfaction. It's time for the globe to hear your voice. It's time for your destiny to rise. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Ah. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. I share the burden of your pastor. He's here because he loves you. He's here because he desires to see you rise. Let me tell you this. The pride of every true leader is not his personal achievements. It's to see that the people committed to him rise by the spirit. These laws are irrefutable. They are backed up by God's own jealousy. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's because his time is a season for you to rise. I want to pray for you. I apologize our time is gone. But in this prayer, I want you to believe. Because one of the laws that I will be sharing with you is the law of spiritual empowerment. In this kingdom, it is not by might. In this kingdom, it is not by power. It takes more than intention and desire. Hallelujah. Pastor, can I speak over your people? One of the graces that God has given me is the grace for speed. I want to pray that grace upon someone's life. Help them, please. Help them. I stretch my hands. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon everyone here at David's Christian Center. I stand by the God of heaven and I stretch my hands. At the count of three. May the mantle that makes for speed. In the name of Jesus. Help them, please. Please help them. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Outside. Take that grace. Shabakatakatos. Speed to your destiny. Help them please. I prophesy speed to your destiny. 
every delay you are in business here receive speed help them please speed right now please bring them out if you can just in one minute bring them out if you can speed take that grace now whether you are an usher or not please help them very quickly let's save time speed outside inside I release that grace here at this conference I shift you by prophecy step into a new dimension a new dimension a new dimension I break the old I break the old For those of you who are tired, you've done your best, but it looks like this. There's no force to move you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. May the anointing that moves men to next levels, may that grace come upon you now. Take that grace. 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 In the name of Jesus, take that grace for your spiritual life. Take that grace. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your finances. Listen to me. Please listen to me. There are several levels of wealth. Three of them. There is wealth that comes by providing value. And then you are rewarded in exchange. Money being one of the rewards. There is wealth that comes. You don't sell that value. Is the reward that comes when you transform lives. But there is a third level of wealth. It's called sovereign wealth. Wealth by prophecy. It says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. I want to speak over your finances. That you have the open-heartedness to listen. You will marvel and wonder at what my God will do for you. I stand in the name of Jesus. And I join faith with your pastor. A man that God had so helped. You, you don't have to bring them out again. That's alright. In the name of Jesus Christ. Over your finances I decree and declare. Between now and the next 90 days. Like the ark of God in the house of Weber Edom. In the name of Jesus. I shift you to strange financial testimonies. Strange financial testimonies. I speak to your business, strange financial testimonies, your family, every financial pressure, those of you in debt, those of you owing, I speak to you, come out of it now. Hallelujah. Finally, let me pray over your prayer life and your word life. No matter what goes right in your life, if your spiritual life goes wrong, that is, the, that is the control room of your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. An attack on your word life. It says, I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. It says, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Every dead prayer life here, that suddenly the passion to pray the passion to wake up, the passion to fast is no longer there. Right now I speak over your prayer altar. Let it catch fire now. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. In the name of Jesus, this assembly is a house of prayer. I release that grace upon you. The grace to study scripture. The discipline to study scripture. In the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him.
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.